Why do you think so many people struggle with the opinions of others when they're sharing their art to the world? I think it's a natural human thought. I, I, I don't know if it was always the case. Because you don't have that at all, it sounds I don't like. have that at all. I don't have that at all. But it seems like 99% of people have that. It seems like it. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I think the best artists tend not to have that or find a way to turn it off. Really? And and a big part of my job with artists is helping them turn it off. It's like we're not we're not thinking about singles, we're not thinking about chart position, we're not thinking about anything but making the most beautiful, honest, true thing we can. And when I say honest and true, it could be fiction. Do you know do you know what I'm saying? It's not uh it's the thing that's touches us and excites us and surprises us, which is also interesting. The fact that we can make something that surprises us happens every day. Yeah. You talk about magic a lot. You know, I've seen that in, in your book, but also in the documentary series about, uh, you know, the work you've done and how does someone tap into their own magic when they have such a critical mind, self-criticism, but also family, critics, managers, all that other stuff, criticizing what's good and what's not good. How do, how do, we, how do you coach someone to actually eliminate or diminish decades of conditioning within a week or two yeah. to make their art? I would say the, um, it, it comes down to a, like a personal reaction to something. If I, if I gave you two different foods and I asked you to taste them, you wouldn't have a hard time telling me which one you liked if you really liked one and didn't like the other. So if you had people around you saying, no, but this other one that you don't like, that's the good one. Mm. That you, No one could convince you that the thing that tastes bad to you tastes good to you. So it's it's a very simple, it's such a simple idea getting to what do I actually like? No second guessing. No, it doesn't go past and, and it doesn't have to stand for anything. It doesn't have to represent you. It's just, this is the thing that tastes good to me. What do you think? That's, that's our whole job is this tastes good to me. What do you think? When an artist is, you, know, you mentioned commerce and you mentioned art. When an artist is struggling financially and they're like, I want to make things that I enjoy that taste really good for me. But I've been doing that for five, seven, 10 years and it doesn't taste good for anyone else. How can I make a living around my art? Or should I not think about my art as making a living, but I should be thinking about commerce separate from the art? I, I think dividing them is a really healthy idea. And just having a job that supports you so that you can be free in your art is ultimately what's best for the art. Really? Now you can get a job related, you know, you can get a job in the industry you're interested in. You can get a job if you're a painter, you can get a job in a gallery. You can be around it. Um, and then also when you do something like that, if you were to work in a recording studio, you may decide this is not for me. You know, we don't really know. We, we have ideas of what we want to try, but then when you try them, sometimes yes, that works, sometimes you don't. So many people get on a track when they're young. I have a, a cousin who um, went to school to become a dentist, and he was a dentist for years. And after 15 or 20 years, just like, I can't do this. I, this isn't, I don't want to do this. It was a wrong choice. So many people live a, an unhappy life sticking to a program from when they were younger. And we have to find, like, you, you are... Speaking to people now versus playing sports. Right. It's a big change. Yeah. But it seems like a really positive change for yeah. you. Yeah. But it wasn't what you set out to do originally. Right. Yeah. You've been doing this for how long now? Producing music for 40 Probably years? about 40 years. Roughly 40 Close years. Close to 40 years. Have there ever been a time where you felt like it was stagnant for you? Or you weren't creatively inspired? Or you felt like it was dull? It wasn't this awe or magic that you were wanting? It was it's always magic. Really? It's always exciting. Um, I can't say that every moment of every project has been that, but there are always these glimpses of wonder that come through the through the 
creative process that are staggering and um they're very addictive you know being in a room where something's not happening and all of a sudden it's happening and you don't know why and you don't know what changed it's a very exciting feeling how often do you experience that feeling all the time really all the time now when i say all the time we may start a project that maybe doesn't happen for a few days, mm. but then it starts happening. What is that moment? And, and what is the feeling that you have? And what is it that you notice either in your mind or in the environment that is shifting for that feeling to occur? It's an inner excitement. It's like a leaning forward. It's a, cur a curiosity of like, can we hear that again? Mm. What was that? What was that? I've not heard that before. That's really? interesting to really? me. Really? Absolutely. So after four decades of doing this, you still get surprised by hearing new things. All the time. Really? All the time. Why does this work with this? Who knows? And if I were to tell you the idea, or if someone were to tell me the idea, I would listen to their words and think that's a terrible idea. <laughs> and then we try it and it's remarkable. Wow. We never know. We never know what's going to happen when we do anything. Yeah. So to stay neutral and to keep every iteration along the way and be willing to look back after you just spent months refining something to then say, you know what? It was better three months ago. Throw that all away.